I'm speaking briefly on the subject inquiring of the Lord. Inquiring of the Lord. One of the things we all do during times of prayer like this is that we inquire of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We ask God questions. We want God to guide us. We want God to direct us. We want God to order our steps. And so it's important to learn a few things about uh, what it means to inquire of the Lord. And then we'll spend a few minutes just to pray uh, on that topic. I'll read three passages of scripture uh, together from 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 7 and 8. And then 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. 1 Samuel 30, 7 and 8, 2 Samuel 2, 1, 2 Samuel 5, 17 to 19. I'll read them sequentially, uh, one after the other. So I start with 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 7 and 8. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the effort here to me. And Abiathar brought the effort to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. It happened after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. And David said, Where shall I go up? And he said to Hebron. The last reading, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17 and 9 to 19. Now when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. One word runs through all that, uh, these three verses, and the word is inquire. Inquire. What does it mean to inquire? It means uh, several things. I'll give you three things that it means. One, it means to raise a question or to investigate something, to interrogate a matter. And we see in David's example that he interrogates the Lord. He investigates. He makes an inquiry. He raises a question. Shall I go up? So to inquire means to raise a question. Secondly, to inquire means to seek for answers. When you need answers, you go to the one who has answers. When we make an inquiry or when we inquire, we are looking for answers. We want somebody who knows the answers to tell us the answers. In this sense, David knew that God had the answers, so he asked him of, for the answers. So when we inquire, we raise a question. We seek answers and thirdly, when we inquire, we are asking for help or we are pleading for help. It involves prayer. In the Hebrew word, the word that is, or in the Hebrew language, the word that is translated for us in the English as inquire, it's used many times for people who presented their request before the Lord. So inquire also means to pray, to ask for help, or to see God's guidance. So when we inquire of the Lord, it means we address our questions to the Lord, and we seek answers for him, from him, and we seek for his help. In all the three passages that we read, we note that David inquired of the Lord. And these are not the only verses where David inquired of the Lord. I only chose three. 
but he did it very frequently. David inquired of the Lord. Throughout the life of David, he inquired of God. He sought for God's direction. Why and how was he able to do that? How could David, who was not a priest, inquire of the Lord? Because David had a personal relationship with God. He knew the Lord and he spent a lot of time in God's presence. If we're going to inquire of the Lord, we must know him personally, not know him care of somebody. David had a personal relationship with God. And David was also able to inquire of the Lord because he sought for God's mind when he was making a decision. He was unlike King Saul who acted impulsively. David didn't act impulsively. Impulsively. He always sought for the mind of God. And that's the reason why he won all his battles. Throughout his reign, he never lost a battle. Because he didn't just go fighting. He fought the battles that God asked him to fight. And there are times that God would tell him not to fight some battles and he would not fight them. And, and so he had 100% success because he inquired of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. It wasn't just because he was a good soldier, but because he sought for God's mind in his decision making. And not only did he know how to ask God questions, he also knew how to hear from God. He developed the ability to hear from God. In the Old Testament, people depended mainly on two sources for direction. The priest and the prophet. The priest and the prophet. There were times the prophets spoke to David. And there were times the priests spoke to David. But in a lot of the inquiries he made, it wasn't from a prophet or from a priest. But he spoke directly to God and God spoke directly to him. Even under the Old Testament, David knew how to hear from God. And for those of us who are in the New Testament, we better know how to hear from God if you are going to inquire of the Lord. And then, when David had inquired of the Lord, he followed God's leading faithfully. Once he knew the mind of God, he followed. He didn't just seek for God's mind and God's will for fun. He was a doer of God's will. How was David able to do that? What was his methodology? What was the process? What did he do when he was making an inquiry of the Lord? Well, in his Psalms, one particular, he gives us a certain clue. Psalm 27 verses 4 to 5. Psalm 27 verse 4 to 5. David gives us a certain clue process. And he reads Psalm 27, 4 to 5. One thing I've desired of the Lord that I will seek that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock. The three things I want you to note. First, abiding in God's presence. This is the first thing that helped David to know the will of God. He says, one thing I desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord. One of the most important pursuits of David was to be in God's presence. To dwell in the house of the Lord. In the old covenant, which is the covenant that David lived under, the presence of the Lord was in the temple because that's where the ark of the Lord was. So when people wanted to be in the presence of God, they would go to the temple. And David did it many times. He would sometimes go to the temple and just sit down. Just sit before the Lord. 
and, and wait on the Lord and be in his presence. If you're going to inquire of the Lord, you better love the presence of God. You must love the presence of God. You must be happy when you are where God is. Abiding in God's presence. And whilst we are praying and fasting, that is part of what we are doing. We are learning to abide in the presence of the Lord. And that is the place where inquiry is made. If we're going to inquire of the Lord, we must abide in the presence of the Lord. David said that's one thing he did. And not only that, he says that when he was in the presence of the Lord, he beheld the beauty of the Lord. He observed the beauty of the Lord. He saw God in his majesty. And he called the majesty of the Lord the beauty of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, David thought about the works of the Lord, the ways of the Lord. He saw how God had put all things beautifully together. Beholding the beauty of the Lord. You know, many times we look at life in silos. This is happening there, that is happening there, that is happening there. And we never see the hand of the Lord in the events of life. Sometimes we even see our life and we think our life is confused. I don't even know what I'm going through. Everything is just confused. Everything is bizarre. But when you behold the beauty of the Lord, you see that he's making all things work together for your good. You see his beauty. You see his plan. You see his design. You see that God is a God of beauty. He's a God of order. He's a God of design. Nothing happening in your life is by accident. And David said, I saw that in the temple of the Lord. I beheld the beauty of the Lord. The God is working with my life. Have you taken time to admire the works of God? Yes, we can admire the work of God in creation. We see the mountains and we say, oh, how beautiful the work of God. But I'm talking about, have you taken time to look at your life and see the beauty of the Lord? Have you seen the beauty of the Lord in whom he allowed to be your parents? Have you seen the beauty of the Lord in all the things you have gone through in this world? Have you seen the beauty of the Lord in whom he allowed you to marry? Have you seen the beauty of the Lord in your children? Have you seen the beauty of the Lord in what has been happening in your life since COVID broke out? Because when you look and see the beauty of the Lord, then you can see that nothing is an accident. And that's what David said. His life was not all sweet and nice and honey. His life had a lot of bitterness. But he said, when I go to the temple, all I see is God's beauty. I see him working my life together. I see him moving things together. I see him making all things work together for my good. I see the beauty of the Lord. And then he said, because of that, I will inquire of the Lord, seeking God's will and guidance. David inquired of the Lord while he beheld the beauty of the Lord. In an atmosphere of worship. If you can't see God's hand orchestrating all the events of your life, you cannot trust him to ask him for his will. I used to have a lot of struggle praying for God's will. I used to have a lot of struggle. And uh, I've said it before that uh, that hymn that says, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take, and that point is say, take my hands and take my feet when I was singing that song, I got to that place, I wouldn't sing, take my hands and feet. Because my mind couldn't see that God, I can trust God with my hands. What if he breaks it? I said, God, take my leg. Boom, he knocks it out. Take my heart. Boom, he's, he breaks it. Because sometimes you can go through some bitterness in your life. And that happened when I had lost both of my parents as a teenager in one year. And I said, I can't trust God. What if, 
What if I trust him and he kills me? What if I say, Lord, take my life? And he says, thank you. And he takes it. <laughs> because I couldn't see the beauty of the Lord in the chaos of my life. But now I can look at everything that happened to me and see the beauty of the Lord in his temple. And so I can inquire of the Lord because I know what I saw as chaos was God working out his plan and purposes in my life. It is only when you see the beauty of the Lord in your life that you can say, Lord, show me your will. Because you know, whatever he leads you, it will be good. So David tells us the sequence. He doesn't just go to the presence of the Lord and say, Lord, I need money. Lord, what should I do? Lord, whom should I marry? Lord, tell me what to do. No, he starts with abiding in the presence of the Lord. And then he beholds the beauty of the Lord. And after that, he says, Lord, by the way, what should I do about that thing? How should I handle that problem? Should I deal with with this directly should I fight that battle that person fighting me in the office should I reply him or should I just leave him alone and God will say do this and don't do that and do this and do that and David then says after he has done that he says for in the time of trouble verse 5 he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he will hide me. He will set me high upon a rock. David says when we seek the Lord, inquire of him, he will protect us and promote us. Set us on a rock and hide us in a pavilion. There is a place in God where although the enemy is wild outside, he cannot get you. There is a place in God where everything may be going wrong, but in that place there is comfort, there is safety, there is security. And when we inquire of the Lord, he takes us to that place. In the Old Testament, the temple was God's dwelling place. That's where David went to inquire of the Lord. But where do we go to today to inquire of the Lord. Do we also go to the temple, to a church building? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? David had to go to a temple to seek God. We don't have to go to a temple to seek God because God's Spirit dwells in us. So how does God lead us? The spirit of God dwells within us. Not in a remote physical location. Because when at night you need direction, you cannot get up to say, let me go to Christ's temple. If you live far away from here, if you live in some place at Frafraha, or you live some, even in another country. How are you going to come here to inquire of the Lord? But your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit because he dwells in you. The inquiry is not taking place outside you. It's taking place inside you. The Spirit of God speaks within us. The Lord can and he does speak to us by the inward witness through dreams, through visions, through gifts of the Holy Spirit. But all of that happens because his spirit has taken residence in us. We are his temple. Unlike David who had to go to a place, we have to be in a state. A state of worship, a state of contemplation, a state of prayer. And God speaks to us. And the spirit of God leads from within us. Sometimes God leads us without speaking to us. He simply holds our hands, so to speak, and walks with us. He said, just holds your hand and walks with you. He said, Lord, where are you going? He said, just trust me. And he just, you just go in and you, 
He holds your hand and guides you. You don't hear his voice. You don't hear direction, but he will guide you. Other, than, other times, you will hear a voice, but there are times you don't hear a voice. And all of that comes because the Holy Spirit dwells within you. This morning, we can also learn from David in our prayer to inquire of the Lord. And I'm going to give us four prayer topics that we'll pray about today as we put into practice what we have learned today. I know you're still taking notes, but put down your notebook and let's pray. Are you ready to pray? <laughs> all right, let's all rise up together. <laughs> Do you want to inquire of the Lord? I don't know what you want God to speak to you about. Maybe you have uh, something at home that you need God to uh, give you guidance uh, with or whatever decision you are making. But I believe God is going to speak to you and you will hear his voice. Even if you don't hear his voice, you will feel his guidance and his direction. So the first topic we are going to focus on what David focused on, to be in the presence of the Lord. Say with me, Heavenly Father, you are my dwelling place. Thank you for drawing me into your presence. Your presence is heaven to me. Now begin to pray and thank God for bringing you into his presence. Thank him that the Holy Spirit lives inside you. His spirit lives in you. He's here with us. We thank you, Lord. You are our dwelling place. Your presence is our dwelling place. We are conscious of you, Lord. We are aware that you are moving, that you are working, that you are at work in our lives. Thank you, Father, for your word that is abiding in us. And your spirit that abides in us. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the preciousness of your presence all over us. The Lord is our dwelling place. And wherever we are, we carry his presence. We carry his presence on the job. We carry his presence at home. In our car, in a trotter, in a bus. Walking by the roadside, cycling, jogging. We carry his presence wherever we go, in the air, in an aircraft. Lord, you are our dwelling place. You draw us into your presence. And we are aware that you are with us. Your presence is all that we need. Your presence is heaven to us. Your presence is life to us. Your presence is strength to us. Your presence is wisdom to us. Your presence is all that we need. Your presence is our knowledge. Your presence is our information. Your presence, oh God, is our teacher. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Secondly, we want to pray, as David said, to behold the beauty of the Lord. Say, Heavenly Father, I behold your beauty. I see your hand bringing everything in my life into your perfect will. Just thank him that he is bringing everything. Even things that make you cry, see the beauty of the Lord in it. Things that bring you to tears, things that make you so angry, so angry. God says my beauty is being worked out in it. Things that disappointed you so bitterly. Things that scare you. There is the beauty of the Lord. We go to the temple to see the beauty of the Lord. Not the chaos of our lives, but the beauty of the Lord. There is beauty. There is order. There is harmony. There is direction. Your life is not a mistake. The events of your life are not a mistake. Oh yes, it seems chaotic, but it's not a mistake. God is working. There is a beautiful thing coming out of your life. And we see the beauty of the Lord. We see the awesomeness of his plan. We see that God has us. He is holding us. He has us in his grip. He has us in his grip. 
he has us in his grip. None can take us away from his hand. The life cannot take us away from his hand. Satan cannot take us away from his hand. People cannot take us away from his hand. He's holding us very strongly. He never loses hand, his hand on us. God, we see your beauty. What was meant for evil, you are working it out for our good. What was supposed to be disaster, you are using it, Lord, for your glory. We see your beauty. We behold your beauty. We behold your beauty. We behold your order. We behold your order. We see your design. We see your purposes. Your purposes are being manifested. Your purposes are working out in our lives. Even our past, our painful past, is for your purpose, oh God. It's for your glory, Lord. We offer our pain to you, Lord. We offer disappointments to you. We offer hurts to you, Lord, that you will work out your purposes in them. Oh, we behold your beauty. We worship you. Why don't you spend some time just worshiping the Lord? Thanking him. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's, the Lord is not like a president. A president is limited. He's not like a king. A king is limited. The Lord is awesome. He has no limitation. He's perfect. There is no injustice in him. He's faithful to the absolute point and degree he never fails in any of his promises whatever he says he would do he does it just worship him just worship him we behold your beauty lord we behold your beauty lord this morning we behold your beauty we behold your beauty in jesus name and david says it is in that place that i inquire of the lord say with me heavenly father Lead me by your spirit. Guide me by your hand. Order my steps into your will. Why don't you ask God to guide you? Ask God to guide you. Ask God to guide you. Lead you. You don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to move from frying pan to fire. You don't want to run from one mistake and get to a worse situation. You don't want to run from trouble and get to something more dangerous. You don't want to act in haste. You don't want to be like Saul, acting in haste, acting in haste, acting in haste, acting in haste and making terrible mistakes until the kingdom was taken away from him. David learned from Saul and he says, I would not act in haste. I will inquire of the Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me in your righteousness, Lord. Make your way straight before me. Oh, you are the only one. You make my way peaceful. You make our way straight. You make our way peaceful. Lead us, Lord. Lead your people, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Lead your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, you will be led by the Lord, not by fear, not by emotion, not by anxiety. The Lord will lead you. There is beauty coming out of your life. There is design in your life. There is purpose in your life. And David said he inquired of the Lord. He asked God questions. He asked he asked God, should I go? Should I not go? Should, would you be with me? Would, would I be successful? So I want you to pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What should I stop doing? Impress your will on my heart. Now inquire of the Lord. Inquire of the Lord. Inquire of the Lord. Ask him specific questions. What do you want me to do about that? How should I handle that, Lord? Inquire of him. Impress your will on our hearts, Lord. Let your will be clear to us, Father. Let us have a clear sense of purpose and direction in all that we do, Lord. 
show us what to do. Show us where to go. Show us whom to talk to. Show us whom to ask for help and whom never to ask for help from. Show us what to say when we are in that place, when we go for that interview. What should we say, Lord? What should we not say? Inquire of the Lord. Inquire of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. You are our guide. You are our helper. You are our strength. You are our shield. We behold your beauty in all the events of our life. We see your hand bringing order out of chaos. We see you, Lord, taking what was meant to be evil to work out your purposes. We see you using our lives to manifest the glory of God so that all would know that there is a God and his ways are perfect. So Lord, we honor you this morning and we thank you for the direction you give to us and we thank you for the guidance in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord praise this morning. Amen. And any time... You want to go to God to inquire of him. Just learn to follow this principle and come before his presence. See his beauty. Make your inquiry and the Lord will order your step and the Lord will guide you. Amen.